What is the one thing the 49ers can't afford to do this offseason? It's a wild card question. I'm not going to hold you to it, but I think it's an interesting thing to think about. What is like in 2017, the answer would have been don't draft Solomon Thomas. So something like that. You know what I'm saying? I'd say they can't afford to not pick at least two starters with their draft this year. Right? They need at least two capable NFL starters or else they're in trouble. So that's my offseason must have. Yeah, I'm going to say, and, and I know that there's a lot of different things that they're they're going to need to address. And one of them uh, that I, I don't know if it's really been being looked at is uh, they need to make sure that they have a second pass rusher going into 2021. Ooh. Nick Moser is going to come back. We don't know where he's going to be with his knee. Hopefully, he comes back and be and is the guy that that he you know he was before. Um, D Ford, we don't know where he is either. So if you know at this point, and you don't want to go into next season with without addressing, I think that defensive end pass rush spot. Great answer so far. I wasn't thinking of those. Good stuff. All right, what about you, Leo? So I would say they can't start the twenty twenty one season without either a Matthew Stafford or b Ooh. Zach Wilson. Those are two guys that could start for the 49ers week one. Trey Lance, I would reserve my, you know, talking points saying he's not ready for week one. But it's got to be one of those two guys. If Sala does leave for a head coaching job, that means the 49ers are going to get two thirds. So that would be a 2021 and 2022 third round pick at the end of that third round. So that's extra ammo to have if you do need to move up in the draft uh, and use resources. You have that there and, you know, in your bullets. All right. Good answers. Good answers, everyone. I'm going to go. I like only only Stafford or Zach Wilson is that's that's tough. I don't know if they can pull either one off, but if they do, do. they're they're in they're in good shape. I'm going to go a little bit broader. Uh, I'm going to say as long as they don't draft Trey Lance and I could be wrong and this could come back and bite me, but I don't like I don't trust Trey Lance and he's getting he's going to be there for the 49ers. And Kyle might look at him and be like, oh, I could turn him into Steve Young. Kyle, don't. Don't. Don't do it. You're looking at a guy who threw 318 passes in one double A. No junior college. He's not ready to start week one. He's a major project. He's like Taysom Hill. When he steps in the pocket, when he stands in the pocket, he just stands in one place. He has no pocket. I think he's, I think he's a bust. To me, if the Niners come away with Wilson or Trask, they're okay. They're fine. I don't know if they're going to have a chance to get uh, Wilson. I think Trask should be there unless he dices up Alabama this weekend. Either one should be fine. Fields they're not going to have a chance at. Good for them. And then Tr- Lance. Lance is scary to me. Scary. He's a really good athlete. He can run fast and he can throw hard, but a lot of bad quarterbacks can run fast and throw hard. That's all I'm saying. So. Well, I look at it. It's like those are the four interesting players in the draft: Lawrence, Fields, Wilson, and 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 uh, excuse me, Lance. So, how many times in the draft do they go four for four multi Pro Bowl quarterbacks? Not very often. You figure right. Lawrence is definitely going to be one. I right. have my concerns about Fields. I Same. think Wilson has potential, and me I have too. my concerns about Lance. So. Yep. It's basically Fields, Wilson, or Lance on who's going to be that other guy in the draft. It could be none of them, but I would say Wilson is closer to can't miss than Fields or Lance would be. I just, it's like, I don't understand why Lance is in the conversation. He had one year in one double A football. What did he do? Uh, it's, Kyle Trask is in the middle of his second season dicing up the SEC. Are we sure that Trey Lance could do that? I don't think he could. If you put him on, Florida right now, would he have 40 touchdowns and five? I don't think so. Man, I could be wrong. I like to think that way in terms of quarterbacks. Like, what if you put so and so on this team and so and so on that team? Who would who would benefit? Trey Lance, I think, is is a, is a, a topic because of Carson Wentz. People love Carson Wentz about six months ago, and they looked at Lance. They're like, "Oh, that's the next guy from the same pipeline. He's <laughs> big and strong." And now no one likes Carson Wentz. And they're looking at him like, oh, "Maybe he's not ready to play." Maybe the speed of the game and all of it. So that's what I'm saying. Be careful. That guy it could get you fired, Kyle. Because if you get the wrong quarterback, it doesn't matter how good your plays are. You're gonna get. You're gonna eventually. All these draft mistakes are gonna catch up to you. Passing on Mahomes, passing on Watson. So, you know, I know that Zach Wilson has uh, done really well in this year. And one of the things that concerns me as I watched him is he's done well this year. He struggled against NCAA competition his first two years. 
this year, look at he's playing. He's, he's pretty much playing the director of the NCAA, except for Coastal Carolina. Agreed. He, uh, he went out and blew out North Alabama. He went out. He, you know, he hasn't played anybody this year. When Agreed. he played good competition last year, he had uh, 11 touchdowns, I believe, uh, yes. nine interceptions. That's right. Uh, at least one fumble uh, right. for return for a touchdown against Washington. So, you know, I'll take a little bit closer look at him as we go through. But that's a concern of mine. When you, and, and part of the reason why I say it's a concern of mine is if you go back and you look at Okay, let's take it, for example, we know that C.J. Beathard isn't very good. Right. Well, C.J. Beathard on the 49ers has been the same C.J. Beathard that he was when he was at Iowa. True. And so are we looking for all of a sudden Shanahan's going to work magic and we're going to turn a quarterback into something different? Yeah, where's the, where's the track record of that? That's a really interesting point. Zach Wilson is very hard to evaluate because when I watch him, he just has all the time in the world to throw. All the time in the world. And he may not have great receivers, but he has a decent offensive line and he can just kind of run around in circles and wait till someone's open and then make some cool plays. But he didn't do that last year. And no. also the thing is it's um, ball placement, anticipation, throwing windows and all of that. And I look at that with Zach Wilson and he has that. He has uh, where he could stretch the play, run around and eventually find someone open. Although he's not playing against very elite talent, he's not playing with very elite wide receivers. So any quarterback or secondary matchup they go against, it's going to be pretty even. San Diego State, is they have a better secondary than BYU has receivers. So And Zach Wilson still played well. They have a few guys at San Diego State that are going to get drafted. Uh, I can't really say that about the BYU receivers. And then it, you look at, okay, the competition. How many Alabamas come out? become all pro pro bowlers. So I think that competition is a little over talked about. I look more at ball placement. Can he play off script? Um, anticipation. Can he, can he find the throwing windows and throw his receiver open? And Zach Wilson is doing that this year. So I, that's why I get excited for an idea of Zach Wilson paired with Kyle Shanahan, not Zach well, Wilson paired with uh, Mike McCarthy. Yeah. And I, I hear what you're saying. And I, and what I'm going to say is I'm going to kind of go back to what Grant said. In terms of the timing that he has in the pocket, um, it's a completely different game when you can go back and you have nothing, nobody around you, nobody around your feet. It's much easier. It's like playing seven on seven. A lot of the things that I've seen him be able to do this year, it's almost like he's out there just playing playing seven on seven because he's not getting hit. He's not getting chased around like he was in previous years. So ball placement, those kind of things. I agree with you. I've, I've seen that too. And I, and it is impressive. His arm talent is impressive with some of the things that he does. My concern is when he's had pressure around him, he has not, he has struggled and he's not been the same guy that that's putting up the numbers that we've seen this year. Maverick, you got something to, to contribute to this highly academic conversation. I don't want you uh, just hanging out in the back there. I, I just, I, I don't think they're going to get a quarterback in the first round because I oh. think, I just think Wilson's going to be gone. I, I, him under, or I believe he'll be in the top five. Top five I, agree. I, I do think he's really talented. And I think he'll go top five. And then, like you said, there's concerns with Lance. Uh, and you've said as well, there's concerns with Trask with his arm strength. And I, I think they got to go offensive line or cornerback. Best player available, in my opinion, first round. Second round, third round, maybe. But real quick, I want to say why I like Trask. And Jack, if you want to say why you like Trask as well. The thing that's cool about Trask to me is he's not he's in the SEC. He's not at Alabama. I disqualify Alabama quarterbacks. They have amazing offensive line and running backs. They hand off and do throw play action passes too easy. But what what he's doing is what basically Joe Burrow did last year. Joe Burrow had a first round running back, two first round wide receivers, but he was at LSU. Kyle Trask doesn't have the first round running back. He lines up in the shotgun, drops back, no play action and dices up the SEC. He drops back 50 times a game. And he dices up the SEC, 40 touchdowns, five picks. That's remarkable. To me, he's not Deshaun Watson. He's not Patrick Mahomes. He's not going to be that upper echelon of quarterback. But he's as good of a pocket passer as I've seen in years coming out. And his numbers reflect it. Yeah, he's very good. One of the, and the Kind of on that one, too, and I'm going to say something that doesn't really, uh, you know, there's, a, there's a, one guy that I know that back when uh, Mahomes was coming out, that year, there wasn't a whole lot of talk around Mahomes being a top level guy. He was he was considered good, but not. And there was one guy that I know that said that this is going to be the guy that, that they go after. Coffee's for closers. Yep, and and he he's, he's so all, over, all over Kyle Trask this year. He's um, all over him. And, I and, I, 
and I trust what he has to say because he's really good at, at the quarterback stuff. So. Real quick, in 16, his guy was Prescott. In 17, his guy was Allen, and Allen didn't come out. Uh, it, it, oh, it was Mahomes, too. In 18, his guy was Allen. In 19, it was – who were the quarterbacks in 19? Oh. I don't know who he liked. But I know last year he loved Herbert. He's always right. He, uh, Jack Hammer was one of my – originally a, a commenter on the, the Santa Rosa Press Democrat message board. Coffees for Closers is another guy. And so we have this little net network of, of friends that go back the last 10 years. And this one guy is just, he should be on an NFL team. Every year he's like, oh, that's the guy. It's that guy. And we're like, nah, man, you, you're not going to be right again. And then he is. I don't know how he does it. Jack, he does it every year. Yes, he does. He, every sure. year. He was so, he had such conviction about Dak Prescott. And we were like, dude, this guy, what are you talking? He's a fourth round pick. Shut up. Now, the problem was he started off in 2013 pipping Zach Mettenberger. So I think that was a rough start. But since then, he's been lights out, lights out, and I've never really gotten it right. So I just—he says Kyle Trask is good. I believe him. <laughs> there you go, Mettenberger. <laughs> Jesus, Mettenberger. <Mettenberger's laughs> but then you got to start somewhere. I was saying David fails. Who am I? Who am I? Anyway, yeah, all right. <laughs> I think it was the San Jose State. I just wanted him to be the next Jeff Garcia. You know, you should have just left that unspoken. Yeah. Well, Harbaugh said he was a top five quarterback in the draft, so Harbaugh's wrong too. I never went that far. I like Tyler Wilson. That was my. That was my first foray into quarterback scouting, and it was probably the end because I was whoo, I was wrong. But Reggie McKenzie agreed with me, so we got that going.